What's up, guys? Here with you with FC Wonder Kid episode 14. Here with my guy, Bretson. How are you? Ah, uh, I'm doing awesome. I'm doing awesome. I can't believe it's episode 14. We're halfway through the not, no, wait, we just started the Olympics, and uh, I don't know. The transfer news is flowing, and boy, is it flowing uh, ever strongly. So I, I think we need to get right into that, right? That's where you wanted to start. Oh yeah, transfers is the hot topic right now at the summer. So, but the Olympics too. Like we're gonna get to that next. Uh, yeah. But at the start of the video, I just want to mention, guys, please comment down below in the YouTube comment section what topics you want us to talk about: yeah. predictions, team rebuilds, anything you want. Like, because sometimes we have a, like our last topic usually is like improvised. Like mm -hmm. uh, for this podcast, we were planning on a rebuild here, which we'll mention at the end. And yeah, if you guys want to have an impact here on the episode, please do comment down below, leave a like, and please subscribe. So and, and those, getting to well, it. Well, sorry, those that have commented though, we, we do have a list, an ongoing list. So we'll get to them, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and the rebuild we're doing is from a common. So yeah. that that's important to mention too. So you want to start on the transfers. And I think the club that's being talked the most with the transfers is Man United. After yep. confirming the signing of Jadon Sancho, which mm -hmm. was necessary and took a way too long. But now Dave has the possibility, Santan Dave, has the possibility to wrap about Greenwood, Rashford, and Jaden Sancho trio up front for Beautiful. United. Beautiful. How do you feel about that? I, I'm just, I'm happy it's done. I want to see him hit the ground running. I have a feeling he will, um, but but not to the tune. I mean, the kid's not going to be a world beater on day one. Um, but hey, he took the number 25. Uh, maybe that's how many goals and assists he provides this season. I think that'd be a pretty solid first season. Um, but no, I'm just, I'm happy it's done. I'm happy he can get there, get ingrained that, uh, Solskjaer got his, uh, contract extension as well. So Man United is, is, uh, attempting to build that cord that, that, that they can take into the future. And Sancho is definitely one that's going to lead them there. Right. Well, Ali getting the contract extension must be because United feel like he's done a fantastic job because we know Ali isn't right right now. One of the most wanted managers out there in the market. I don't feel like a Real Madrid or Barcelona would want Ali. So this contract extension wasn't because of interest, but because no. of saying thank you. You know, we were in a tough situation. Ali, you've brought stability, but is he the man for the job? I'm going to stick with my guns here and I'm just going to say Conte should be the guy still. But leaving on that, Jaden Sancho arriving for the price tag he did at 85 million. Mm -hmm. It's you're expected to get now top four a hundred percent next season. Oh, yeah. And if he doesn't, well, I think he'll be sacked. I think that's um, that's an easy pr uh, prediction. Pr plus, okay. I think Sancho would need a player like Trippier to help him offensively. Uh, yeah. Aaron Juan Bissaka, really good player, but he can be the third center back. I'm, I've been saying this for years. I'd love to see Aaron Juan Bissaka playing as a right center back in a three defensive. Uh, the old Kyle back. Walker role is what you're uh, exactly you're alluding to here. Fair enough. I f he'll okay. be f one on one. We all know what Aaron Juan Bissaka does. Like right. in the three center back tactics, Aaron Juan Bissaka would be lethal, and Trippier would cover the offense. Hmm. So, I, and Trippier is on the news for United. But I wanted to mention this with the United talk. Did you see what happened with Paul Pogba? I did see what happened with Paul Pogba. That was going to be my next question to you. Um, I, I, I think if you can get if you can get 40, 50, 60 million for him, do you do it? Yeah, you do it. Because I don't <laughs> think Pogba li uh, will, would like... I don't think Pogba liked the idea of Oli getting ex the contract extension. I mean, yeah. Uh, I don't think Ollie and Pogba is exactly the best uh, chemistry there, but um, I think it's it's happened. It didn't work out like it should have. The Mourinho experience didn't go well, and I think Pogba wants a new adventure. At least yeah. I have that feeling. But I was surprised with how the Paris Saint Germain fans reacted towards the interest of Paul Pogba going there. I'm Pretty more tech. shocked about the yeah. wage bill not exceeding if Pogba yeah, goes um, to Paris. No, I don't get the PSG fans there, you know? 
could be the same thing though. A, a Pocatino, is he going to be much better? Right. Uh, and, and, and that's, that's, that's a whole nother discussion in the future. Right. Um, mm-hmm. He just got his extension too. Right. Pocatino. So um, I mean, really what it kind of comes down to is if there's any friction with Paul Pogba, it, it needs to be alleviated. It needs to be done before the season starts, if at all possible. And if there are suitors, you know, this has nothing against Paul Pogba being a world-class player, uh, but for the team, um, I mean, I think you got to move forward with that, right? So you uh, think Pogba's staying? No, I think Pogba's going. I think it's better for the long run if he if he does go, cut bait now and, and move on. Move on, for sure. Yeah, because the common problem I see with Man United, Arsenal, all these big clubs, I'm not going to say Chelsea and Man City, uh, is they can't sell the players that don't work. Phil right. Jones is still there. Fred is still there. Many players that didn't work out for Man United are still there. And I'd like to mention that right now to the next transfers I'd like to lead up to is Tottenham. Uh, uh, Fabio Paratici is doing yep. an amazing job managing Tottenham, in my opinion. And everything around Kane, okay, because I think Kane's leaving. I think the Tottenham okay. rebuild is real. Mm-hmm. And getting it. Alder Viral, 13 million. Uh, getting the contract extension of Son. Maybe signing Christian Romero for like 25 million. Getting I mean, I mean, Lamella's wage bill out and getting mm-hmm. a youngster like Brian Gilles. There, there's thinking. There's a plan in place, you can see. And even the goalkeeper, Golini. Um, yep. It's Golini. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, you, I, can, I have a feeling that things are going to plan with Tottenham. And with clubs like Arsenal, United, I getting Sancho done. Varane, let's see if it happens. But I feel like a midfielder would be necessary too. I've I've been always saying this: United need a midfielder. Yeah, well, um, well, we're back to United there because I, I mean Sorry. Spurs. I, I think, no, it's okay. We're going to be all over the place when it comes to this because there's just so much news flying in. Uh, but I absolutely agree with you about Spurs. It's it's good to see. I don't know how Alderweireld. Well, is um, worth, what do you say, 13 million? Uh, yeah. But hey, if you can get it, get it and move on. Um, I think Romero, it's a done. I'm not sure. I think it's a done deal. I, I haven't seen it cross yet, but it probably will. Yeah. But 25 million for Puti Romero would be absolutely a steal um, and something they could certainly build upon. And I love how they're rating Atalanta uh, to do so uh, from Galini and, uh, and uh, Puti Romero. Uh, but I, I do love how you kind of glossed over how you weren't going to talk about Chelsea or Manchester City when it comes to not being able to get rid of players that you that don't necessarily work out. When mm-hmm. Chelsea had Marco Van Ginkel, um, let's see, Danilo Pantic, um, Baba Raman, I believe, is still on on their roster. They mm-hmm. have been saddled with absolute uh, mismanagement of, of certain players' contracts for years and years and years. But those are of yesteryear. The new Chelsea might be a little bit different because we've seen what's been happening as of late, getting 23, 24 million for Mark Gehi, right? Um, who's another one? Help me out. Well, they've had some academy youngsters move on. Um, Miles Pert harris um, and, and uh, forgetting who else here. But, Brendan, but in like 30 loans, they're going to have yeah. like four that don't work out as well for the club, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, it's like Angelina with Manchester City. That's for sure. When you have a network of clubs, uh, you're going to have to have management of players that don't work out, and you're going to have to get them off your books at some point. But it took Marco Van Ginkel five years, six years, to actually move on to PSV for nothing. Do you, I don't. He's he's like a yesteryear player. Um, so there, just a just an interesting uh, way to look at things. I don't know if that's going to become the Manchester United of the future. I'd um, say, well, I'd say the eternal wonder kid at like Chelsea was Lucas Piazon. Oh yeah, uh, he stayed there a long time. He was on loans nonstop to the Eredivisie. But I still think like in so many loans, like it's it's just normal. Some some of them don't go as well. Like as we know, sure. Chelsea were like thirty loans every yeah. season. Which is ludicrous, in my opinion. But they were just profiting off it. And they, they, by selling Mark Gouet, like, which in Swansea, he was amazing, okay? Mm -hmm. Ball passing ability is on point with Mark, okay? Crystal Palace got a fantastic deal, I think, with Mark. So they got Olise, Ezi, Zaha, Mark, 
Mark Gui. I don't know how to say his name. I'm sorry if I butchered it. I don't. I don't know either. But yeah, it's, it's <laughs> but, that works. But it's a fun. It's a really good transfer window for Crystal Palace, in my opinion. But I'm it still is. doubtful with Patrick Vieira. I really hope it works out for Crystal Palace. But the mm -hmm. transfer window, on point. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Yeah, Vieira, from a manager perspective, I, I don't. I really, honestly, haven't seen him succeed anywhere. Right, except yeah. when he's on yeah. the pitch. Um, you know, I still remember him uh, and his stint at New York City FC. Um, so I think the biggest thing for Crystal Palace is to get them all on the pitch together uh, and, and get them healthy uh, because they're not right now, right? So some of those, I know Elise is still dealing with uh, injury. Um, who else is out long-term? Oh, Ezzy. Ezzy is out long-term. Um, but they did offload Andros Townsend, right? And he's over at Everton um, joining Benitez. Um, and I got to say, because it's kind of against the grain, what Rafa Benitez has been doing over there or, you know, whoever's pulling the strings, right. And you might know the name. I'm forgetting the name right now. Who's pulling the strings over at Everton. Is it brands? Mm -hmm. No. Not um, sure. anyway, Demarai Gray, Andros Townsend, Asmir Begovic, they're not going to knock your socks off, but you know what they are for Everton because what actually hurt them time and time again last year, mm. they're depth. They are depth and they're depth for cheap. And they're, they're not, you know, they're not asking Demarai Gray to come in and score 15 goals or whatever, do something with that he couldn't do with Leicester and that he couldn't do with Bayer Leverkusen. But what they are doing is they're actually building uh, relatively Premier League caliber players um, mm -hmm. that can help assist a guy like Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who was lights out for about 85% of the year last year, right? And then he mm -hmm. faded away and couldn't score because he wasn't getting much service. So uh, against the grain, I really like what Everton's doing in terms of focusing on the depth first before going out and bringing in the pieces that they feel they absolutely need. Um, I know there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with me on that. Um, I, but well, I, I disagree on you on that because yeah. uh, when Ancelotti was there, he got Ben Godfrey. Mm -hmm. he, got, he got, I feel like they got players with a higher caliber. And I'm not going to say it's the Ancelotti effect, but it must be important like to know the 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 stature too of the coach and i sure. feel like Rafa benitez uh i don't have a grudge on him going to everton you know because he was a he's a liverpool legend right but the truth for the matter is like he's got the family living in liverpool he loves the city and mm -hmm. it's completely understandable for him to make a decision professional wise to coach in everton but i don't think it will work out i'm not i'm not very hopeful with Rafa Benitez at Everton. I could be wrong, like at the end of the season, but comparing Everton, I'd like to compare with a with a team like, let's say, Wolves. I think, sure. m like, I'd, I, I'd pick maybe an Aston Villa or a Wolves on top of Everton for next season, okay? This is a bold statement, but I like yeah. the management done by these teams. And plus, Leicester. Leicester, I know Begovic was a really good find. He, he must have gone as, for free, right? Begovic oh, went for free. Yep. Uh, but Tass, uh, Toss went, and um, you mentioned there, and uh, Demari Gray, Town how, how much yep. was it? Like, uh, Townsend was a free, and Demari Gray was $2 million. Okay, if considering yep. that, like, three good it, snatches. It's, it's shrewd business. Shrewd business, and, it, you know, there's a, there's a whole lot of doom and gloom surrounding Rafa. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. I agree with you. Uh, my first take on Rafael Benitez there uh, was that it was going to not end well. And I think most of Everton, most of Everton's fan base feels the same way. Uh, but it, it, I, you know, Everton's just a team you want to see do well. And, and uh, at least for me uh, over the last mm -hmm. couple of years and, and back in the day when Landon Donovan was playing that with them, Timmy Howard for a while, um, they're just one that we always looked at and, and really wanted to see move up that table uh, back when Timmy Cahill was uh, uh, punching down uh, corner kick flags, uh, corner <laughs> flags for, for fun. Um, it, they've just been a fun team to watch on this side of the pond. But uh, last season was pretty much, you know, par for the course in terms right. of do well and then not until they don't do well anymore. So uh, anyway, we spent too much time on on the Toffees. Uh, you know, one of the other, I think one of the most exciting teams that are going to be to watch this year and could be in line for, say, I'm not going to say a, a Leeds type of year like last mm -hmm. year, right? But I really, really like uh, Brentford. And uh, just to see them 
uh, making really decent on paper decisions, uh, bringing in Christopher Ager, uh, Ager, I think, or Ayer, um, mm-hmm. in from Celtic. I mean, he was Celtic's kind of pulse, all right, uh, last yeah. several years, at least before they, you know, lost the lost the SPFL title to uh, Rangers last year. Um, but he is a very uh, good player to add to your your um your center backs and you can also play dm so uh and then they also short up the midfield with frank on um so 223 year olds getting a little bit younger there uh to go I, I just have to bring this up brentford was a team that several years ago they cashed in when they missed promotion they cashed in on neil mope you might recall that right it was over yes. 20 million euros to brighton right they yeah. cashed in on ollie watkins they cashed in on uh, Saida Ben Rama, who went to um, uh, West Ham, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Those are three massive, like, talismanic figures for Brentford that left, and they still spent wisely bringing in Ivan Tony from the lower leagues, and they were able to get on up there. And I honestly believe that if they, if they can actually apply that type of uh, – that knowledge of the player market as they already are starting to, it seems like, like good on paper. We'll see if it's good on the field. Um, I, I think they could be a surprise package this year. Um, not quite Bielsa and Leeds, you know, uh, success, uh, but definitely up there playing attractive football and and one that we're going to want to watch. So I know that yeah. they use a lot of advanced technology in the scouting, uh, okay. the scouting <laughs> platforms. And actually, I think the owner of Brentford is the owner of Michelin too. So a lot of Scandinavian players can go to went to Brentford too, and they passed along. And Ben Rama, yeah, like selling Ben Rama and managing to still come up to the Prem, it's fantastic mention there. And Bruh. yeah, it's fantastic. Azure, I, I'm actually, I was actually surprised that he went to Brentford. Uh, I was sure that many suitors must have bid. But yeah, let's see. I think he must believe in the project if he's going there too. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah, you must be right. It's the same same reason people are uh, signing up left and right for what Christophe Gauthier is doing over at uh, Nice. But one of the other things, you know, I had to to bring up here, um, and and I got to ask you, uh, there there was a lot for some reason, a lot of trans. I mean, there's always a lot of transfer chatter around and what Cristiano Ronaldo is going to do next. <laughs> um, but it was nice to get a little clarity on that this week. At least Pavel Nedved came out and said. Now, Cristiano Ronaldo will be, you know, a, a Juventus player. Um, he'll he'll be reporting on Monday. Uh, and, uh, and basically, we have uh, no plans on getting rid of him or Paolo Dybala, mm-hmm. which is really interesting. And it could be because, uh, I mean, looking at his past lineup uh, selections, could be that they play two up top sometimes. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, or it could be a depth thing. Uh, but... What do you think? I mean, do you think Ronaldo should move on? A lot of people were saying PSG. Well, I, I was planning on this being the last topic, and I'm really happy you mentioned it. So, uh, Ronaldo, I feel like he would have rather left Juventus. Okay. But can he, though? I don't think mm. he can. I don't think the right club is there. And George Minge, I think he knows that. And Christian, too. So, um, I think he'll stay at Juventus another year. Okay. But... Next season, I think Mbappe is going to leave PSG, and I think Ronaldo's going there. It's so fitting. Uh, I think that's going to happen next season. This season, it can't happen because of all the wage bills and even like the amount of contra- like the negotiations for Ronaldo to leave a club. <laughs> those take very long. So. Right. Right. I think he'll stay another year at Juventus, and let's see what happens. But with Juventus, I was, I wasn't surprised because for me, Chiesa doesn't have a price tag right now. But I saw that Liverpool yeah. gave a hundred million bid for Chiesa, and Juventus rejected it. And it was the right choice. I'm just gonna say yeah. that. But the world is watching, and you can't keep all these players. Juventus, uh, Juventus will have to make a decision here. Of who are who's going to be their stars? The league might want to leave. Okay, Chiesa, I think he'll stay. Dybala, I was surprised that Allegri really wanted him to stay because I thought Dybala might leave Juventus, and Cristiano is going to leave next season. I, I, I mean, can't yeah. see him staying. 
it was positioned pretty much the whole season, uh, especially when Dybala wasn't playing. Uh, it was positioned that it was either CR7 or Dybala in terms of resources, right? Yeah. Um, and now they're saying maybe both. Um, so that's that is interesting. But yeah, I mean, okay, one more year. I, I know Cristiano could probably play until he's fifty, uh, and you know, still still score. Uh, but I, I honestly do believe that. Yeah, he's got to he's got to make these last years count. So um, wherever that's going to be, uh, but it's but, more yeah. of a legacy. You know, Ronaldo likes sure. to have a story. It's not just like go to a club. He likes to have a challenge too. And I think Ronaldo doesn't have the right challenge uh, offered to him at this moment. So that's why he's I think pull- he's going to stay. He's pulling a David Beckham going to PSG. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Maybe then go to the MLS. You never know. So You never know. Or back to sporting, right? Um, hey, I... <laughs> Uh, you know, there's there's just so many so, so many more. To, did you have any other big ones that you wanted to talk about? Because we barely scraped the surface. But you know, oh, no, no, no. I think I think with the transfers, I think we're up. Okay. Well, I have one more before we move on. Okay. Somebody get this man a new. No, just kidding. But uh, <laughs> Gonzalo Montiel. Yeah, you may recall that he was the one that put in a pretty heroic performance in the Copa yes. America final. The right I saw back. Saw a comment on YouTube too. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, there, there's a good chance. Um, I'm I'm just so surprised that there aren't five, ten, fifteen clubs fighting over him, or they're doing a really good job, uh, you know, put basically not publicizing it. Um, but it seems like Valencia is is actually going to sign him, um, and and it will be announced relatively shortly. But eleven to twelve million euros, and this is a kid still pretty young, um, and and certainly uh, La Liga seems like the best place. But I I was just surprised. When going back through those rosters, um, Copa America, uh, specifically the Argentina roster, right? Cuti Romero, where was he going to wind up? Uh, Montiel came up again and then saw that comment. And it looks like Valencia. I mean, that'd be a good place for him. Um, but anyway, happy to see that. Uh, happy to see Son sign a new Tottenham deal. I, I, for some reason, I can't see him anywhere else right now. Uh, you already said that, though. Uh, and I, I think we can put it put it to bed right that the, the trans- i just like to say with son like son is so important for for tottenham that it's the south korean market they yeah. have to keep son if son doesn't go a lot of finances go down for tottenham and yeah. daniel levy <laughs> he's all about that finances so he needs to keep son and he kept them i'll tell uh, you what here's a good set here's a good segue for you if they really really want to clamp down on the south korean market they go out to, to Valencia, right? And they get Kang and Lee, right? Mm-hmm. Because he is, once again, balling out at the Olympics. Um, and uh, I think he had a, maybe one or two goals today when uh, I believe they beat Mexico, who obviously trounced France. So uh, there's my segue to Olympics if you want to use it. Otherwise, you can just shoot it down. Yeah, but like that France team, like it's it's oh, no, horrific. I mean, yeah. It's just as Gignac and Gignac had like the performance of his lifetime. With a hat mm-hmm. trick and a last minute assist, which I give it to you. Like it was a fantastic game, but that yeah. team is very poor. Like I'm really disappointed oh, that France didn't bring a bit a better names, okay? Because they're so stacked. France yeah. is completely stacked. And the names that are out there, I'm not gonna bash them, but there's more call quality there in the C or the D team, okay? Right. Uh, but starting the Olympics, I have to mention this. Give Pedri a rest, man. 68 <laughs> games this season. Have yeah. you seen the state of that man? Like, yeah. <laughs> his face says it all. Like, how is he still playing at 18? Come on, yeah, Barcelona I mean, medic- medical department must be like, chill out, Pedri. Chill out. Yeah, he reminds me of like... Uh, um oh man what uh walter white as he moves through breaking bad right <laughs> I, I, I understand he, he's sick too so, in in the show but in terms of uh you know him dealing with his choices right um pedri looks like there's a little bit of why did i sign up for this um i know the guy probably can't even grow a beard but it looks like he's letting one come in uh poor kid though i mean him donnie Olmo looks tired uh you know they, they still managed to win today uh so you got to give it to them and mm-hmm. i think it was your o- o- uh who yeah. actually scored the match winner a nice nice one brian heel looked lively on the wing tottenham fans i mean you got to watch him 
um, pretty exciting. But uh, that I, I agree with you. Sixty-eight matches, man. Hang them up for right that, now. That was a really good deal done by Tottenham, Brian Gill, because yeah. Brian Gill offers something technically that little to none players do. He's he's really technically gifted, and I think I feel like getting Lamella off and getting Brian Gill, perfect yep. deal. But uh, Danny I Olm, I agree with you. Danny Olm looks tired too. But I'd like to say the best player in the Olympics for me, in my opinion, <laughs> in terms of world-class ability. Okay, you have Richard Lisson, but you have Diego Carlos too. Like yeah. the center back, Pau Torres and Diego Carlos can be the best center back duo in the Olympics. And <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's a, Sp a Spanish against Brazil final. Uh, it can work out really well, yeah. but uh, I, I I'm gonna give it to Brazil. Okay. Uh, and I like to say I was really <laughs> I laughed a ton when I saw this. Did you see that he Charlison? He posted like a pic that because he he had a first half hat trick. Okay? Yes. And well, you had minutes, players like yeah yeah yeah, which was fantastic. But Leandro Perez was saying ah in a final like na Copa like in a Copa America where were you yeah. he Charlison? Where were you? So it's I understand <laughs> that criticism, but I think Brazil are coming here to win it all. They Claudinho. Yes. I think after the Olympics he'll leave. And Danny Alves, uh, da uh, Danny Alves is going to get another trophy in his books. Like how many does he have already? So right. uh that team is very very interesting. Not to very mention he's, he's he's actually playing well, you know? He's not just their Mr. Locker Room. He is actually playing pretty damn well i, I agree with you I agree. Yeah. and an another overlooked player for brazil and which is a baller is Bruno Bruno Guimarães. I, I, I was literally just about to announce it yeah <laughs> absolutely and him versus germany it was phenomenal so uh yeah uh, he yeah. Bruno Guimarães offers a lot of stability to a midfield he's yep. so reliable he loses the ball like minimal and yeah. Like, yeah, I, I really like him. I was, yeah, he, he might leave Leon too. See, I know he came early. I know he's like, he's been a year there, but I yeah. can't see him staying too long. He's uh, really good. I, feel, I just, I feel like he hasn't even really given all he could yet to, mm -hmm. to that Leon squad and they're going to need it more than ever this year. But uh, uh, yeah, I think one more season, if he has a good season with them, um, it's kind of, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, there, there will be offers coming in. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, just going back to it, I mean, you mentioned it with France, right? Um, Germany was the exact same thing. And, and listening to Stefan uh, Kuntz's, uh, like, expedition, like Indiana Jones, like, I got to go find a player that actually wants to join my team uh, to, to go to the Olympics. It's, it's kind of baffling, right? And, and it is, mm -hmm. it's kind of the German standard, right? They, they, don't, they don't really care. Uh, they're not really given a crap about bragging rights, and and frankly, I don't blame them. Um, but yeah, could you imagine a full squad, full but, German squad there? But Germany do have they do have bragging rights uh, because they won the under twenty one tournament against my team Portugal. Oh, that's true. Yes, and yeah, like them winning the under twenty one uh, tournament does like bring in players like Florian Wirtz needs a rest, Karim Adeyami needs a rest, Yusuf Mokoko. I know he wasn't there, but he needs a rest too. So yeah. Musiala is a first team quality already. So all these four players, Diamond Shaft, be hopeful. Mm -hmm. Like it's not the Olympics is turning really bad that's gonna put you down. And just yeah. look at the names. Like you're right. Arne Meyer is the interesting player in that team. For in my opinion. I like him a lot. Like yeah, he's, he's a really good midfielder in my opinion. Uh, but I like to mention here, uh, like my 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 I really need to mention this of the Olympics topic mm -hmm. is Takefusa Kubu. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kubu is, whoa, he's good, you know? And I think Real Madrid, Real Madrid fans are going to say, look, we got a Japanese here that can be, like, the one of the players of our future team. Like, he's really good. And Hitsu Doan next to him. Yeah. That partnership for Japan. Japanese, wait, they're coming, okay? Yeah. They're going to be first team quality soon. And they're very, very good. So I'm very, very hopeful on these two players. Really high potential. And right now, they're balling. And Ritsu Duan developed incre incredibly well in the Eredivisie at Groningen. So, yeah, it, yeah. And, and to be and honest... Then he, I think to, and then he went to PSV, right? 
Yeah, I, I just think a Kubo loan too that your division makes the most sense. I mean, they keep sending him to I, I, what was it, Alaves last year? Uh, yeah. Another one, I think they had. They had it was a it was two loans in one year. I think he had Vilich uh, Yell. Vilich Yell. Yeah, Kubo the kid. Wins. The kid just needs stability. He just needs to play. It's one of those things. I say it. I feel like we say it a lot about players. You need to find a place where he can play through his mistakes and still get put in the eleven because you know he offers a quality, many qualities that nobody else can match on the pitch, right? But that's a good so, pick. That's a good pick. You saying Kubo to Eredivisie because Odegaard had the similar effect and he improved a lot in yeah. the Eredivisie. So I like. That. Yeah. So you know and. Um, I, I got to go back just for one second to that German team, right? Mm-hmm. Very quickly. We have to remember that these Olympic Games actually did kind of inspire one player in particular uh, that, that tends to come up a whole lot now when you're talking about the superpower that is Bayern, right? Mm-hmm. And that's Serge Gnabry. And that was his instance to ball out. And that was his kind of, hey, wow, look at this kid. He can actually do some things, right? Mm-hmm. And then... Not surprisingly, after the Olympics, he had a breakout season. Um, so you have to think about that other other end of the spectrum of these players that that will hopefully be able to uh, break out um, at this tournament. And I don't think it's going to come from the D and the E and the F because Serge Gnabry was not considered, you know, so low down on the totem pole when it comes to being a German youth international. Um, so I don't know, man. I I just wrestle. I wrestle with that. Um, I wrestle with the French bringing, like you said, like their E, their F team. And then you have the complete flip side, and we're getting angry at this, Spain bringing like a flipping A team, and we're like, you got to rest the players. So it's kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't type of situation for these clubs and these federations. But um, I think Brazil I, I like... has the best, mix, the best mix in the team. Yeah, Brazil, oh, yeah. You, got, you got players that are reliable there, and they're not too bad. And, but I like to finish off with, with, with the Olympics with Mexico. Like, yeah. Mexico brought in Lainish, you know, and Diego Lainish and Alexis Vega. Yep. I was really happy to see those two playing extremely well. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll personally, I didn't know too much about Alexis Vega, but seeing he's a winger at Guadalajara at 23 years old, yep. uh, he has a goal and assist, I think. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, he might he might get a move because of the Olympics, and I, that's what I was thinking when you were mentioning Gnabry. But going a bit against what you said, if Gnabry went to this uh, Germany team at the time, he would yep. still be the best player in that team, because Germany has, in my opinion, you know, sure. like you don't have a lot of talent there. Maximilian Arnold, like he was a wonder kid, I'd say five years ago. Right now, right. well, yeah, he's one of their old players. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, Gnabry in past Olympics. He was in past okay. Olympics. Not bringing him to this one. I mean, Serge Gnabry got yeah. a chance to ball. Yeah, yeah. but okay. even the quality in that team, it's better. So... Yeah, fair enough. But, uh, you know, you, you uh, Alexis Vega is definitely going to be uh, to one to watch, and it's always nice. I mean, if you look at just the dribbles completed uh, stat right now, Diego Lainez mm-hmm. is, you know, up at the top there. Uh, Takafusa Kubo is probably up there too. Uh, but we also have to remember, and I think one of the dark horses here is going to be Ivory Coast. The Ivory Coast, you got Franck yeah. Cassier, you got yeah. Ahmad Diallo, you have uh, Wilfred Singo, who plays in Syria and is, it was actually pretty high up in, at least for U23s in some of the statistical categories. Um, and, you know, they've got, these are guys that have played together in the past, right? Whether it's mm-hmm. the African Nations Cup uh, or, or other, um, uh, competitions down there and uh, I, I tell you what the African nations generally do very very well at the Olympics um, and I don't think this one's going to be any different the Ivory Coast looks like a team to beat they held Brazil to a 0-0 draw um, just today I think uh, and yeah them and Mexico I would say are are, are dark horses um, to win this thing even though Mexico lost today after a man I think a man they lost the guy. They, they were a man down 11 minutes in. So they had to play 80 minutes of the game, uh, a man down. So, um, hey, this is the fun part of the Olympics, right? Um, <laughs> uh, it, it gives us more football and more more um, shines more of a light on some of the players uh, that likely would not get an opportunity if it's at the U21 Euros or, um, I don't know, just playing some insignificant friendly during the summer. So you want to lead up to the next topic here? Yeah, because, you know, 
the league the leagues are going to open up pretty damn quickly, right? Um, we've got Belgium starting today. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, who else? Austria is is in motion. So uh, your next wonder kids, you're going to have to uh, know. You've got the SPFL in Scotland starting next weekend, yeah. and also Russia started over the weekend or earlier this week. So we're going to look at four these four leagues, and uh, there's definitely some wonder kids you got to watch in there or future wonder kids. So uh, who's mm-hmm. your first one? Uh, I'm going to go safe here on my first pick. And I'm going to go for the, the genius forward at Club Bruges, and that is Charles de Kettler. Yeah. Uh, he, I'd like to say, just before I mention uh, like his abilities, he's the first player, first Belgian player, to score more than one goal in the Champions League. And I like him. Creativity, defensive output. You know, this is so overlooked. But a player at such a young age this, that shows quality defensive output that's like that's a really good trait to have and sure. passing ability he's mm-hmm. very comfortable going on the wings and going to the middle he's yeah. really good about the space around him he's really aware about it and i'd say he's like top three belgium youngsters right now doku charles de Ketteler, and the third one you can you can you can kind of have here a debate here but He's very, very good. Like I'm yeah. really hopeful on him. And guys, watch out, watch out. Yeah, and and unfortunately, um, the the improvement that he saw last year in his defensive output is probably mm-hmm. the exact thing that is going to send him away from Club Bruges. Uh, so close your ears, uh, Club Bruges fans, because no, I'm I'm sure they know what's coming. Um, mm-hmm. the the teams are circling him, his versatility. Uh, yeah, and I think he scored both of those Champions League goals against the same team, uh, the home and away leg against maybe Zenit. It was like a Russian team or something. Um, Not 100%. So he, he, was, he was absolutely vital to their, um, their, their league win last year. So a very good shout, and I think uh, we would have gotten yelled at if we didn't, we didn't mention him, right? Well, I'm going to then go over to Austria quickly, and I'm, I'm going to highlight kind of three at once because they're all really, really intriguing. Every year at Red Bull Salzburg, you have this turnover, Potts, well, Erling Holland, Dominic Schobeslai, uh, then Potts and Daka this year, right? Moving on, mm-hmm. and you've got to you've got to have people that are going to step up next uh, under a different coach. Uh, had their first game and they actually had a comeback win. They went down early, uh, but you have to have a guy like Brendan Aronson, who's from my hometown academy, the Philadelphia Union. Um, who stepped in wonderfully. He's one of those kids that you put him into a situation where the level has definitely stepped up some, and immediately his talents just kind of went up there, right? And he matched the quality of the game. But he's going to have a very, very different year, along with Karim Adeyemi and Benjamin Sesko, who's come in, uh, the Slovenian striker who played mostly for the reserve team last year. These three are essentially with uh, Sekou Koita, out, um, injured again, these three are going to have to somehow figure out a way to continue uh, Salzburg's dominance. And uh, early early signs say that they're going to be okay. But Adiyam is 19, Aronson's 20, Sesco, I believe, is he may have just turned to 18. And he's a big target uh, that's mobile too. So Red Bull Salzburg, I think, has like the top 14 uh, highest valued uh, of the top 15. Um, Austrian Bundesliga kind of wonder kids. So he, this is going to be a place you got to watch and a place that the Bundesliga certainly is always looking. Um, uh, Brendan Harrison is a fitting replacement to Dominic Schaubos lie. I'd like to yeah. say that for starters. And you are a hundred percent right with Karima Deyami. This kid is going to the very top. He's got pace, awareness, finishing is extremely mm-hmm. overlooked with him because people tend to think that players that are fast-paced have bad finishing. Sorry right. to say, guys, some are really good finishing. And yeah. Karim Adeyemi is one of them. So I really like that mention. I'm going to yeah. stay in Belgium still because yeah. I still feel like there's a lot of talent to talk about here. And I'm going to talk about Marco Kana. Okay. Because first thing I love about Marco Kana is I got to know him as a center back, but now he's a CDM. So that's versatility right there. And he's 18 years old. He's really good with the ball, in my opinion. And tackling-wise, as you should expect from a former center back, now a CDM, he's really good too. Strength, 
on point. At 18, he's already a very strong player. But uh, I'd like to mention this. He's a player that is developing for the Premier League. I feel like mm. Premier League clubs are mar looking at Mark Kane from Underlect more and more. So, guys, watch out. Remember the name. And, yeah, Mark Kane from Underlect. Yeah, looks like they had a pretty rough start to the uh, season today. They lost 3-1. to one, But uh, I, I'm, I'm going to – so, <laughs> there is a center back on that team that's pretty intriguing to me and, and has been intriguing, intriguing since uh, – uh, well, he was – he was coming up at Manchester City. Given mm -hmm. probably his most competitive loan so far, uh, he's going to Anderlecht. Uh, this is Taylor Harwood, Harwood Bellis, um, who I'll, I'll tell you what, I mean, if uh, whether it's the scouts there, whether it is uh, fans there, anyone that's watched him play really do believe that th this kid has a future at Manchester City, at mm -hmm. City, okay? And that's important to understand because um, he's thrown right into the thick of it today. Uh, three one loss, it looks like to start the day, but he started at center back, uh, for Anderlecht. And I mean, his positioning, his IQ apparently is you know off the charts for a kid, I believe, who's still let me see here, he is still 19. Yeah. Um, but he's smart, he's physical. Um, he is gonna be one of those guys that can, um, well, he organizes the game, organizes the defense for them. So it's going to take some time if he's slotting right back uh, into center back for them, a, a position that Matt Miazga was pretty damn good uh, mm -hmm. at for them last year. So Harwood Bellis is going to be one to watch because it, it, he's teetering on the edge of, is he actually going to wind up breaking through at City like an Eric Garcia did? Mm -hmm. Right, we might not remember him fondly there, or city city fans might not remember him fondly there, uh, or he kind of goes the way of uh, the loan army and and finds himself a separate place. This is a big big loan for him, um, but definitely going to be one to watch. And with Bellis, I do see a lot of comments that mention his passion. I feel like he's a player that lives for this game, and when you when he plays, you can see it. So yeah. that's a really good pick there too. Uh, I'm going to go my last pick from the Belgian League. I promise, guys. And it's Pierre Dumont. Uh, why? Because he's from 2004 and he's already in the game. Yeah. So I saw the, the interest from AC Milan too. And I was thinking, whoa, who's this guy? I know you, were, you knew a lot about him. And I mm -hmm. went to see and I understand now. Like... Talk about a good young midfielder. Like a lot of the, cap uh, the traits I said about Mark Gane, expect them to with Pierre Dumont. Uh, yeah. Awareness defensively, on point, reliable. This is what is so crazy now. I, I think the players that are younger now are so reliable compared to 20 years ago. Like yeah. it's like they're ready to go and play at the highest level. And yeah. it's Pierre Dumont is just that. So. Yeah. Expect to see him at Gink. Another player for you guys to watch. And yeah, a really good, really good midfielder. Yeah, and I think a testament to that, um, you bringing up uh, Duomo at 17 years old, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Luca Oyen as well at Gink uh, at 18. And then you have Noah Mbamba at 16, already getting a run out for Club Rouge. I think that's a testament to your, um, these kids are <laughs> being brought up in the right way right now. Yeah. I mean, fundamentals first. Uh, continuing that passion for the game second uh, and always you know, having that hunger to, to listen and learn. And uh, each and every one of those kids for sure uh, have that and Harwood Bellis too. So uh, my last one then, and I know, you know, we barely kind of <laughs> scrape the surface of Russia, which we'll have to do in a, in a different one, but I'm going to go to actually to Scotland uh, mainly because he, he was kind of overlooked mm. by me. He's overlooked by me, and I, I kind of like to look at Scotland a whole lot. And uh, Nathan Patterson has come through for Rangers under Steven Gerrard. Um, and, and the reason why he hasn't really hit my radar that much is because you've got arguably the, the team's the Rangers' best, most effective player in Tavernier um, <laughs> playing right back, right? Uh, and Nathan Patterson is a right back, uh, but he is uh, 19 years old, and uh, he will get more of a shot this year. Um, and when he did at the end of last season, he was very good. And so far I know in the friendlies, I think they're playing Real Madrid right now. Uh, they played someone big a, a couple days ago that everybody was raving about. Um, you know, Patterson is going to develop into 
uh, I'm not going to go as far to say a Rangers legend, but he could be somebody that is going to be um, absolutely vital for them to, for years to come. He's complete complete fullback, uh, one that can get forward, one that can also stay back and, and stay at home. Uh, is the amount of improvement that's happened from last year to this year earned him a flipping spot on the Euro 2020 squad for Scotland, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that in and of itself uh, tells you all that they feel um, that he can become to them uh, for sure. So he's going to be one to watch, and it'll be even more interesting to watch whether or not Rangers can continue uh, to make Scotland theirs, right, after years and years of it being only Glasgow Celtic, right? Um, <laughs> That's true, and Stevie G's is doing a phenomenal job at Rangers, but yeah. I'm really interested to see how he does next season. Because Morelos won't be there at Rangers. Like, yeah. at least the news is saying that. And I feel like he was the cobblestone of that team. He's like the mm -hmm. key player of that team. So I want to see how they perform without him. Another Zambian kid, man. Watch out for him. He's a little older. That's why I haven't talked about him. But Fashion Sakala is very good. He also has a, an amazing name. I mean, just be called Fashion is pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, but he's another Zambian player, uh, and uh, I'm sure Pat Zendaka well, can give exactly. us a nice scouting report. Uh, but Fashion Sakala is going to score a lot of goals for them this year. You'll see. Well, talking about scouting reports, and we only have 10 minutes left here in the podcast. Oh, no uh, I think we, we should go here with the rebuild because yes. that's what we promised at the start of the podcast. So, ding, ding, ding. The podcast, uh, the rebuild is going to be about Borussia Dortmund. Mm -hmm. That. We are seeing so many news that Erling Haaland is going to Chelsea, which we mentioned that not just last week, but like three weeks ago. We did give yeah. a glimpse about that. And I feel like Haaland is leaving. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, if I were Dortmund, I'd say, look, you're giving us 130 million. Why not give us 80 and snatch in a Kalamatsuna Doi there too? Uh, Sancho left. There is a vacancy there. I don't know if Nani is going there, but Daniel Malin, though. Yes. Goodbye. Goodbyes. Yeah, so, I don't know. I know you You might disagree. I, I, I completely point. disagree with you here. I think he's staying. I, I really do. And I know I said that about Sancho, but you may recall, we said there's no way Sancho and Holland both leave in the same transfer window, mm -hmm. right? Both of us agreed on that. Sancho's left now. So now we've got Erling Haaland. We've got Daniel Malin pretty much signed, sealed, delivered. I believe it's for like $30 million, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, deal. Mm -hmm. I think they even might continue to look, and this is on no basis whatsoever, on whether or not to bring in a winger like Anoni Matueke or another. Um, and I, I know you have one uh, on the sideline. But here's why. Malin and Haaland, Marco Rose. Gladbach, Red Bull Salzburg, okay, previously. Mm. Red Bull Salzburg, he actually did coach Holland for a little while, okay? Mm. Malin and Holland can both play. Well, Holland, I'm sorry. This is going to get really tiresome throughout the year. Malin and Holland, that's, <laughs> wow. Anyway, Malin can play on the wing. He can also play up top. Uh, Marco Rose does like to play with two strikers sometimes. Um, and, and just think about this. You've got he Holland, who is fast enough to actually break behind, as we saw him do many, many times before, but strong enough to win the ball wherever the hell he is on the field and to have an impact. <laughs> and then you've got Malin, who is speed, technical, technical, you know, very technical, um, and has the ability to dribble through tight spaces, something that Holland doesn't really do much. Mm. You've got yourself a really nice kind of two-headed dragon or whatever the hell you want to call it, um, setting themselves up at Dortmund. Do I think it's good enough to to you know dethrone a Bayern Munich probably not but that's my reason for why Holland probably stays at least one more year uh well I, I'd like to give clarity to on the reason why I'd like to I, I think uh, Holland is going to leave Dortmund and okay. that is the commissions because right. next season uh agents will earn up to 10 percent of maximum for every transfer fee but this season, no. And we know that Gaiola and Holland's dad, Alfie Holland, get a good commission of the deals. Sure. So I think it may happen this season, Bretton. Uh, and Chelsea, it fits. 
Because imagine if Kai Havertz and Holland mm-hmm. works out. And I want to make the rebuild here interesting too. Imagine if uh, Dortmund gets a cash injection of 130 million on point and mm-hmm. 20 million in bonuses. That's 150 million for Dortmund. That That's is that is the money to change everything, okay? And I know it's always like they sell their players and they won't get closer to Bayern, but yeah. that's 200 million right there. I, they got 100 from Dembele. That was a big year two for them. But mm-hmm. now, if if they uh-huh. believe in Marco Rose, I feel like they can have a really good transfer window. I saw that Demiral, I, th- I think they do need to get a center back. Mm-hmm. They need a center back at Dortmund and Demiral would be a good snatch. Or 35 Kabak. million or Ka- yeah. Kabak. I'm when I saw it Liverpool he wasn't bad he wasn't too bad and I did expect a lot from him seeing the friendlies the Turkish friendlies not the Euros <laughs> but before the Euros and the Turkish friendlies I think there was a game against the Netherlands Kabak was a beast but after then I'd go yeah, Demiral I mean, but, I'd go but... Demiral Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I feel like th- th- this is why Marco Rose is actually kind of the um, th- the focal point of all this, right? Because he's the mm-hmm. one that can tie this all together. Um, because the fact that you even bring up Demerol, right, as part of the rebuild, uh, you're spot on. I mean, they, they have frailties mm-hmm. at defense and it not, you know, not from potential standpoint, like a kanji. I know he's like 25 now. He's still developing. Uh, yeah. Zagadu, Zagadu, like just can't stay healthy, unfortunately, as much as we would like to see it. Oh um, God. you've got, yeah, you've got like defense Schmelzer. I know he's older, but there's a lot of issues uh, that they have to worry about when it comes from an injury standpoint. And they just all have happen to be defensive. Um, but I, I do believe that they, they need to. Bringing a center back. I mean, that is going to be what undoes them. Uh, undo, undoes them. That's a that's a word. Undoes them uh, <laughs> year and year again if they can't find that. And I'll tell you what. The other thing that's happening right now is this is a lot of pressure to put on Marco Royce, mm-hmm. who I don't know. I mean, do you think he's up for it, right? A, a Gio Reyna, who I would love to, to see played more centrally than on the wing, but I don't think that's going to happen much oh, this year. I, I, I well, I'd like to say like it's a testament too of the work that Dortmund has done. Sancho was there four years, yeah. And the player that initially arrived at Dortmund is completely different from the player that left. So mm-hmm. Borussia Dortmund deserves a lot of respect for that. And I feel like they appointed Marco Rose too with the expectations of developing youngsters and I a rebuild, a bit of a rebuild too. Sure. Uh, because they know it's inevitable for Holland to leave. They knew that Sancho was going to leave too. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'd like to suggest one last thing. And people are going to say, oh, you always suggest a striker for any team for rebels. But I'm going to suggest until someone gets him. And that is Dusan Vlahovic. Uh, sure. I feel like you can get him for 40, 50 million. Okay, yeah. from, from Fiorentina. And he's a good player. He would be the player that people would forget the Haaland left. Okay, I'm not saying he's the same level, but people right. would say, okay, you 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 got a hundred million profit plus a Dusan Vlahovic? Mm-hmm. Not bad, Dortmund. Again, good deals. Plus Malin. People don't look at Malin like we do, Breton. Okay? Malin is very overlooked still. Because if Malin was in the Prem or Malin even in the Portuguese league, okay, he would get more sure. attention. Yeah. Uh Malin has like fifty goals, right, in sixty games for yeah. PSV. Yeah. I mean, and I think a goal every 90 minutes when he plays. It's unbelievable. He, when he left Arsenal, people weren't expecting weren't expecting to see what we what, what we just saw. And no. I, I could see Nani too going. It yeah. would be a really good double swoop for Dortmund getting Nani and Malin. I completely agree with you. But I'd yeah. like to ask you this because you know better Reina than me. What are the expectations mm-hmm. for Gio Reyna this season? They're They're high. I mean... They're they're very high. I mean, mm. Give him the number seven, right? Uh, you expect him to to deliver. Is that and, official? Uh, uh, I've seen it on his uh, I've seen it on his jersey. So uh, yeah, I, I believe it is official. Um, I mean, Gio Reyna, he, he has he has the skill set to do this. I, I think under Marco Rose is a, a very very nice next step. 
Um, and it's going to be, I don't know, man. I mean, I just don't know where he's going to play him. Um, play him on the wing, play him and play him centrally. I think he'll have more of an effect centrally, which mm. maybe puts a little less pressure on a Royce or puts a little less pressure on a Julian Brandt to become something that he no longer is. Uh, I, you know, but to have an, to have a healthy Witzel, to have a ha- healthy Delaney, to have a healthy kind of spine again in that midfield, we forget that they actually do have the players to really mount at least, you know, a challenge to Bayern. I wouldn't say a very uh, mm. successful challenge, but at least, you know, keep them uh, moving in the right direction. Um, I'm just, I'm more worried about that health because, hey, one of the biggest worries about Danielle Mullen is health. He's injured. He gets injured quite frequently. Um, so uh, from a Gio Reyna perspective, though, I think this kid's hungrier than hell. And I think he's proven to us um, time and time again uh, that he's he's up for the big occasions. Um, and I think you're going to see the Sancho Holland um, duo uh, somewhat. Uh, it will be missed. Fortunately, sure. replaced by a Reina uh, Malin Holland trio, which is going to be pretty fun to watch. Mm. But you think Holland's leaving, so you and I are already kind of off. We disagree here. You we think disagree. Holland is leaving? I, I feel like he'll leave. But uh, I agree with you. I think Jurena should play centrally. He's a big boy for his age, and I feel like the creativity spark comes from the middle, mm-hmm. and having the options to pass and the mm-hmm. unpredictability, I feel like he's got that more in the middle. So I'd yeah. like to see that. I'd like to see that. Yeah, uh, and, and even that even that makes even more sense if you bring in a guy like Noni Matawaki, right? And um, you mentioned injury prone, like the icon of Borussia Dortmund is an injury prone player, Marco Reus. So. Right. It's they take the risk with injuries. So we, we got three minutes here. So uh, I'd like to thank everyone that's listening to this podcast. And as mentioned at the start, please comment down below what you want us to talk about. Rebuilds, yeah. transfer ideas, leagues that we don't mention as much. We, we, sh- we should start players that you think are ones to watch. Like, mm-hmm information we just want information guys and feel free to comment because we're going to try and answer every comment as we do okay we do you do answer every comment so thank you everyone uh yeah breton i i if, if we're ending i mean you know hey we'll see you next week um and i think what we'll have in tow is a uh what do you think a premier league primer you want to yes. uh, you don't want to commit you don't want to commit to that do you well i would well, like to have pre- some premier league ideas not the predictions but a sure. bit of a glimpse of what predictions we'll have yeah, yeah. At the premier league talk that's definitely one next topic in the next podcast so thank you fun. everyone that's listening to fc wonder kid episode 14 and peace out Rats. see ya